What up, Pittsburgh Steel fans? Matty P, Shannon White. Just doing a quick recap of the day two picks. The Steelers picked three players today. They picked two players in the, in the in third round, one player in the second round. Really exciting day if you're a Pittsburgh Steelers fan. Um, but by the time this goes live, it'll be you all, everyone will have slept on it and you'll be hearing all the different news, all the headlines. But we just wanted to give you a quick recap video to go to. We'll spend a couple of minutes on each, each of the three picks. Um, Shannon, let's start. Let's go chronologically. I think that's the safest option when we're doing these things. It's starting off with Zach Frazier, Roman Wilson. We're going to take our mugs off the screen right now. Let's start with Zach Frazier. Picked in the second round. Picked 51st um, overall. He was the 37th best prospect on Daniel Jeremiah's top 150 players. He was the third center, if you include Graham Barton. He was three spots different from JPJ. That had five or six spots separating them. He was my top center, pure center prospect. He's been your favorite draft crush that I think you said to me on a show since Ben Roethlisberger's, but definitely it felt like for me, you know, in, in the last five years in terms of four years since we've been talking still football. So tell me about Zach Frazier in a nutshell and what he brings to this Pittsburgh Steelers team. Yeah, I'm, my favorite center that I've ever evaluated, and I've been doing this for a while, mm. was Creed Humphrey out of Oklahoma. Yep. And Creed Humphrey – just had such a knowledge uh, and an instinctual ability at the position that I believed that he was born to be a center. And Zach Frazier was my absolute favorite draft target yep. this year for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And the reason why is because since Marquise Pouncey retired, the Steelers have had a huge hole. In the center of your offensive line, you cannot have that. It, you can't have your weakness in the center of your foundation. I, anybody that knows anything about construction or, uh, you know, that's a disaster waiting to happen. Yeah. And it's been a nightmare for an offensive line purist like me. I, I love the grunt work in the trenches. I love the round bellies. And, and I just have such admiration for them. And the Steelers are renowned for – their legacy of centers or at center. Yeah. And I'm just like, well, they got to address this. They've got to fix it once and for all. And Zach Frazier, it was almost destined that he be a Pittsburgh Steeler. He's from Fairmont, West Virginia, which is just like a little over an hour down the road. Yeah. Um, his playing style, his team first mentality, his warrior uh, mentality is perfect. The city will love him. You mark my words. You're, and I think the same thing about Troy Fatanu. I think both of these guys are warriors, and their team first attitude and intensity and all-out effort is going to win over. Even people who wanted them to take a skill position, they're going to be so happy when they see the a competent offensive line improving each week, allowing the offensive skill position guys to be effective, you have to have that. So, to me, Zach Frazier was easily the best plug-and-play center in this class, easily. And I've held back because I didn't know if we would get him for sure. And I didn't want to say, I think he's light years ahead of Jackson Powers Johnson. Uh, I'm not being Clark. afraid of that. Like, when I look uh, at the snaps, like, you know, he's played – Four, over four times as many snaps as center than Jackson Powers Johnson. Yeah. And, and I don't want another – I mean, honestly, I didn't want another Graham Barton uh, where you're going to have to move him with limited experience at because it takes a while to acclimate to play center. Yeah. When you're at tackle, you're out on an island a lot of times. You've got one-on-one -on -one blocking responsibilities. Yeah. Obviously, with a very athletic, twitchy, you know, edge guy. But there's a lot of space. There's not a lot of congestion around your feet. Yeah. Well, when you play on the interior, you deal with that every snap. And then not only do you have power and usually a size, bigger guys than you right over your nose, when you but you got to snap the ball first after calling out any formation shifts or adjustments. It's just mentally as taxing as it is physically. Yeah. And he's saying that you can move a guy there and he's going to do great is a projection. It's pure projection. We know that Frazier is going to be able to come right in and nothing's going to shock him. Nothing's going to surprise him. He is ready for this. 
And knowing how badly the Steelers needed a center, uh, and then to get a guy with such high character. I mean, he's a grown man, Matty. He's married. He's got a child. I mean, he 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 has not had people blowing smoke up his rear since he was in sixth and seventh grade about what a great athlete he is. Yeah. He, this is a guy that's had to work for it. He is a good athlete, but he's not an elite athlete. So everything he's got, he's earned. And then you look at an academic All-American, multiple years. Uh, he's been awarded for his work ethic, working in the weight room, on the practice field, um, off the field, uh, charitable uh, situations that West Virginia Mountaineers football program does. Um, I, I just thought it was the perfect fit, and I wrote about that. He was one of my seven perfect fits for the Steelers. So I, I'm ecstatic. About, about getting a guy of his character quality. Yeah, and as I said, he had the most snaps out of the top four projected guys. I look, I, I still like Barton, um, but pure center, he was the best pure center on the board, and that's exactly what you're saying there. Well, I had yeah. no sacks last year. He's only allowed five sacks in his college career. Um, he's only allowed 14 hit quarterback hits in his college career. Very safe pair of hands. Played a little bit of left guard, so definitely, you know, um, if the Steelers are at, we're in a super pinch for whatever reason, and they did it, I don't think they will. Um, but he has done that, you know, it's not like he's, you know, he's a very experienced guy yeah. um, overall. I, I love the character things you've talked to me about him. I do think he's a sure fit. I'd like to just, we had the grave digger in there is Javon Hargrave on the defensive line. To me, everything you tell me, this guy's a grinder. So I'm just calling him the grinder, right? That's what I yeah, think. Yeah, he's going to grind I, I, things I like into it. the ground. Um, let's move to, to keeping fairly snappy. Let's move to Roman Wilson. Now, Roman Wilson um, was my top wide receiver on the board when the Steelers were picking. Again, yep. this guy was ranked in the in I think it was sixty fifth overall. We got him at eighty four. Um, by the time we'd made these these first three picks in the draft, I think I told you um, when you were on the live stream with Mark and I that the Steelers were like plus twenty uh, mm-hmm. plus twenty three at that point with Frazier. Well, with the Rome Wilson, they're plus forty nine in terms of they drafted guys forty nine spots um, better than overall. If you combine all three picks, than where they were ranked on Daniel Jeremiah's top 150. Now, Roman Wilson com- has is probably one of the better day two wide receivers that's played in like both outside and in the slot. He's a physical guy. He's only dropped 6.1% of the balls thrown to him. He's literally dropped seven balls in <laughs> over, um, over, I think it was two and a half thousand snaps he played in his college career. So it, it's incredible. Um, what he has been able to do for Michigan. I said that he basically made, um, yeah, sorry, seven targets on 150, sorry, yeah, seven drops on 150 college, 157 college targets, which is insane. Um, But this is a guy that made JJ McCarthy look good and made JJ McCarthy a first round draft pick because of the deep passes. He had a, he allowed, he provided a quarterback rating average across his college career of 133.1. Now, That's in, that is like insane as well. It, it is, I believe PFF's quarterback rating is based on the ESPN one, which is a little bit different to the one everyone else has used, but there's actually a bigger fluctuation in that grade. Um, so it's technically harder. Uh, this is a guy that like averaged, I think it was a 68% um, catch percentage, which again, yeah, 68.2%. And he had a yards per reception. Steelers loved George Pickens for having, I think it was 146 this guy averages 16 point yards per reception. Mm-hmm. This guy, he's an awesome pick. Oh, yeah. I, um, <clears throat> we had talked, and there was guys we really liked early uh, because they're such a deep class. Now, I had Roman Wilson uh, as a mid-third-round draft pick. Yeah, I had him as I a know Daniel Jeremiah round. had him higher. Yeah. Uh, but I definitely thought that was the honey spot, the sweet spot to yeah. get him. Uh, you know, at the senior bowl, he was going one-on-one with Quinion Mitchell. Yep. The number one corner in the draft class. And they were having a great battle. And Tomlin was impressed. And Tomlin came over and put him through some paces and made him run some different things. I see, I remember and, that, yeah. Yeah, and then he told people afterwards when he was on the side of the field, that he thought Roman Wilson reminded him of A.B. Now, what he's talking about is his route running, his shiftiness, his quickness, the way he keeps his balance in and out of breaks, 
That's why he's hard to cover. And even Queen Young Mitchell was having some issues. He was. So, to me, that's some lofty comparison. That's lofty air to be compared to A.B. in anything as far as on the field. And Roman Wilson is – he's got the body of a slot receiver. Yes. But he has the versatility and the route running ability to play boundary too. He can play outside. Now, to me, I thought he was quicker than fast. Then he goes and runs a 4-3-9. And, you know, so I thought he – on the long passes he was catching, Yeah, I thought he was just setting the guy up and then toasting him like A.B. Mm. used to do. But this kid's faster than A.B. Easily. Yeah, so – I think that you got again great value, like you said. They are way ahead of, of where these guys were projected to go. These are great value picks, and Cons had to give up nothing. He's Correct. just let the board fall to him. And there's no trades to Brandon Ayuk for exactly. twenty five million dollars. There's no even. I don't still, you know, like you know, if you trade the fifth for Cortland something, fine, I get it. But you don't need to in the Arthur Smith offense. We're not. It's not a West Coast system. There's no trade, crazy trade with the Bengals for T Higgins because they're a rival. There's yeah. no, you know, other, other, you know, there's no other, there's no s- silly big moves we've got to make with cap hits. We're cheap, we're effective, it's good <laughs> value. Like, do you see how many ways Arthur Smith can use him? Oh He's my coming gosh. from a system that he did a lot of play action and, and he pr- courts people on play action. Uh, he could move him inside, he could do him on crossers because you just get him the ball in space. And he's actually perfect for what the Steelers need because what did we say? Wide receiver two in Arthur Smith's offense, 40 some catches, 500 some yards, a couple of touchdowns. I think if Roman Wilson gets that as a rookie, we're okay. And he'll be okay with it. You bring in an experienced guy or one of these top guys, you're going to have problems. If to me, um, and Arthur Smith talked about the versatility 100% there and being a good guy on the field. To me, you look at Malachi Corley, and he's slightly more running back in a wide receiver's body. Yeah, yeah. And then you take Roman Wilson, and he's slightly more wide receiver in the hybrid body as well, right? Yeah. But more of the wide receiver archetype. That's what we need. And, you know, I think it it really gives Russell Wilson options. It gives a steady pair of hands for Justin Fields as well um, in terms of some of those deep balls. Yeah. He's a guy that you, you he'll run back to the football. Like, to me, he does everything that DJ did well, but better uh, already. I think that I think he's obviously a better bloke off the field, which makes a big difference. They're big wins, um, and the Steelers got better at an expensive position, and they got value there. Um, at eighty four, <laughs> particularly, he could have been picked way higher based on even where Pearsall went. Now, let's talk about the final guy, Peyton Wilson. I'm getting more round to the pick. You cannot question that Peyton Wilson is was not the top linebacker prospect athletically on the board production his last two years. I just my only thing I know is one I've heard reports that he was the smartest defensive player in the draft, according to a lot of people. All these good things. I'm not going to poo-poo the pick. I think the pick is good. The pick is huge value at 98 in the draft. You flipped Kenny Pickett. Who, who was not ready to be the starting quarterback you know, for the Pittsburgh Steelers in 2024 into an incredible linebacker if he comes off. But my big thing is if he can stay healthy. You're a big fan of Peyton Wilson's. As I said, I don't, I, I can't, I'm not going to ever knock the pick. At, you know, Even if he was the 80th best, best prospect, when you get him at effectively pick 100, it's, it's, a real, it's good value. But he was the best linebacker, and they got him at 98. My thing is I just hope we don't look back in time and go, did we wish that, that we'd got Jeremiah Trotter Jr. because Peyton Wilson's not available? That's my only knocking him. But otherwise, I'm really happy about the pick. What are your thoughts on Peyton Wilson? What does he bring to this linebacking core? Well, to me, Peyton Wilson, this pick's like Darnell Washington last year. Last year, Darnell Washington's fallen. We don't know why. And we're like, what's going on? And they said he has arthritis in both knees. Yeah. And it's six, seven, six, eight. They're concerned it'll shorten his career. Stillers say, well, we'll take five years. We'll take four years, whatever. Yeah. Uh, Peyton Wilson, it was reported that he doesn't have an AC on one of his knees. Um, neither did Greg Lloyd. Neither did Hines Ward. 
neither is different players in the NFL. Yeah. Um, uh, I don't have an ACL, ACL in one of my knees anymore. Uh, I mean, it's not ideal. Um, it is a gamble. But if you don't what have we one, you can't tell one. <laughs> what, are we can- what are we really gambling on? You're gambling on the 98th pick, a late third round, but you're getting a guy that Daniel Jeremiah says has first-round potential mm-hmm. and talent, and that's the only reason he dropped. And the Steelers have dealt with this before. So I'm sure their medical staff is very familiar. Mm. I mean, Peyton Wilson won everything last year. Yeah. I, Any I, I, award you can win, he yeah. won it. Yeah. And I look at him, and I told you I see Chad Brown. I mean, this kid is so similar. There's there's actually a lot of there's a lot of Luke Keekley in him, too. Yeah, yeah, but but he's the way he's a little taller than Keekley. Yeah, Chad he's a bigger body. Six, he's definitely a bigger body. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Chad Brown was 6'4". He can play outside or inside. He ran like a 4'5". Uh, as we know, Wilson's faster than that. Um, he's got excellent uh, – he, he jumped out of the gym. He's quick twitch. I watched him highlights of him running down wide receivers down the field. Mm. I, I mean, the guy is a athletic stud. Now, the Steelers filled a need, not a huge need, but as GB said yesterday, they're not just filling needs. They're getting weapons. They're yeah. getting guys that the other team's got to be like, oh, we got to worry about this kid because he's that talented. So at first he won't be forced in as a starter, but you ease him in. And I just think that it when you talk about risk-reward, I think it was very much worth it. Now, I'm like you. I liked Jeremiah Trotter. Is you know I've grown on him even more than you have, yeah. But when you look at the the difference, and the Steelers still have picks tomorrow, by the way. True. But when you look at it, I think it's well worth the risk due to the potential reward. Um, <clears throat> I think the other thing I want to throw this out there. People are going to make this thing sounds crazy, but if you more you think about it, it more it makes sense. You when we brought in Patrick Queen was saying that he. He was able to do well because of Roquan Smith. And you look at the way Roquan Smith plays the game. Yes. I'm not saying that Peyton Wilson's Roquan Smith. I'm not saying that with Patrick Queen, Peyton Wilson will be as productive as Roquan Smith. But he could play the role that Roquan Smith plays and let Patrick Patrick Peterson do what he did last year for the Ravens. If you actually look at it schematically and the roles and and the responsibilities that you give both players... And that's a scary thought because you are taking some of the pressure that Queen had originally coming into this Steelers defense to be the to, to, to in that role and to do something that he didn't have to do last year when it was his best year. Instead, you're handing him it back again. That's very, very, very positive for the Steelers. The but other about thing what was- you, you mentioned earlier about how intelligent there different people are saying he is his football IQ. That's what you need wearing the green dot. And that's what Patrick Queen isn't good at. So I agree totally. Yes. And that might keep him healthier for longer as well when he's yes. not having to go yes. crash the crash the line of scrimmage as much as well. So yeah. not that we want someone be, hanging off the ball. I don't think Peyton Wilson is is, is is no Devin Bush in Peyton Wilson. So I'm not worried about that. <laughs> no, but no, like, no, no, no. <laughs> well, we're gonna wrap this up. There's some really good prospects still there on day three. I am dead set shocked in this draft that Brian Dawless or Brandon Dawless is still available. I cannot believe that defensive lineman is still available. And I think the Steelers should be thinking very hard tonight about trading up and getting that guy. He was a guy that could have potentially made it in on the back of day one or very early on day two. Um, There are other guys that have been picked in his place. I wonder why. There might be something medical, but a lot of Brandon Dawless's situation was that his stats weren't necessarily all in the top 15, 20 guys all the time. But his tape, the interior pressure he puts on, it's as if people aren't watching the tape. It's kind of crazy. Yeah, but I actually always think, I I, I immediately think some kind of health concern. There could be something there, there, but with him, the whole thing was, Daniel Jeremiah said about four or five weeks ago now, that people were kind of sleeping on Brandon Dawes for that reason. And I went and looked at some highlights with him, and I'm like, Wow. I think it's because he's a defensive tackle in a 4-3. He's a defensive end or tackle in a 3-4. But 
this is a the pressure he puts. I, you know, he played at Oregon State as well. I think it was with Fulaga. It was either Oregon or Oregon State. I think it's Oregon um, State he was at. So that puts him immediately behind the eight ball as well in just terms of the exposure. But Brian Dawes, like, this this guy's a – this guy can wreck – like, he doesn't have to be responsible for doing it all in the interior. He's a really, really good player. Yeah, he played at Oregon. He played at Oregon. Well, who, um, else, do you, who else do you like tomorrow? Uh, cornerbacks, um, Curry Johnson. I don't know whether he got taken late. Um, he could be an interesting prospect for them. They probably still need a corner. Um, there's a few tight ends that I like later in the draft, like Jared Wiley out of, t- um, would be really good out of TCU, really underrated guy, can block, can catch all the, that good stuff. It's a couple of, I was surprised. I was really happy to see Marshall and Lloyd go earlier. If he was there on day three, I'd be like, you have to. Gabe Hall got back. picked, didn't he? I think he – no, I think he's still available. I thought he got picked. He might have got picked. Maybe he got picked late. Um, I hope he's still yeah. available. Um, man, if and he got Trotter's picked ahead there, of Brandon right? Dawes – pardon? Trotter, he's still there. Trotter's there. I think Christian Jones is still there. Daniel Jeremiah had him as 55th. I mean, it's like me and Daniel Jeremiah are the only people that care about Christian. <laughs> he's still there, yeah. Um, I've seen but- that Luke McCaffrey went – he went last pick, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, Gabe Hall is still there. Um, Leonard Taylor the third. I don't love him compared to Gabe Hall. He's younger, more athletic, but didn't produce as much. I could see the Steelers liking Mikai Wingo, but out of the defensive tackles on the board, Brandon Dawes can play defensive and defensive tackle. Otherwise, you know, everyone knows how much I like Gabe Hall as the best pure three four defensive yeah. tackle on day three. Um, there are some Titans as I mentioned. You know, you can go back to wide receiver and you consider Jerry Rice's kid. Um, you know, there's the yeah, thrash there, kid. Yeah. Um, so there's a couple of those sorts of guys. Beanie Bishop from hey. WVU, he could be there. James Williams hasn't gone yet because people yeah. don't know where to yeah. play him. You go get him, you fix a linebacker, strong safety. I think Jaden Hicks, he went. I think Jaden Hicks ended up going. He was one of my top strong safeties. Um, so there's a few different guys on the board. Um, but you know, I wouldn't, if they went and got, went and got Christian Jones, I wouldn't hate it. You go get another tackle. Fine. Like that's not a problem. Yeah. In this draft. Like go do it because then let's say something did happen to Daniels. Let's say Daniels week one tore his ACL or see a Malu fractures his shoulder and is out for eight weeks. Then you've got room to, to, we've got no real backup guard besides Herbie. You can put for, for Atanu there. So yeah. To get Christian Jones this late, and I got a day two grade on him. Daniel Jeremiah is a day two grade on him. He's a starting right tackle, tackle caliber player. Like, you can't argue with players like that. But this is back to the Steelers letting the board fall to them. So um, it's going to be pretty exciting. Um, but yeah, there's a there's a, a few guys. I'm gonna when we do our live show, which you'll obviously be in access to as well, everyone. So just shouting out anyone that's watching this right now. There will be a live. It'll be a cross live between. Steelers touchdown under and Steel Nation Australia stream through Steelers touchdown under. Um, we will have my big board of day three guys um, up on that. We day two guys flew off the board before I could update the slide for it, but we will have the day three big board up um, as I go through all the different picks. When you're streaming live, it's hard yeah. to stay across all the picks. That's why I didn't think Gabe Ball had gone, but um, uh, I, I had to check it then. But I think Brandon Dawes right now could be one of the number one guys on the board, literally. So you trade That's up. That's the name to keep an eye out for early tomorrow. Yeah. If anyone goes back, goes out and watches some Brandon Dawes tape just to go highlight, you, you'll see what I'm talking about. This guy is, he's a problem. And, um, and Spencer Rattler's still sitting there. So is Michael Pratt. I do like Michael Pratt. John <laughs> Milton, quarterback as well. So there's a few guys out there. Um any names that you that, that that you can think of that you love for the Steelers that are left, or um, just happy uh, you know, to see you what said, happens? You said Beanie Bishop. Uh, I uh, I was really high on him as a slot guy. Mm. Uh, James Williams is what you said because you know I think he's your kind of your box safety, and you know just you can do so much with him in sub packages, yeah. uh, and you know. I, again, I'm not sure exactly who I was left. So after I get done writing my third article, 
when we get off, you need to get some sleep, mate. <laughs> yeah, then I'm, then I'll in the morning I'll check and see who's left. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Well, all three prospects that we said to be wary of before the draft with Big G are all off the board. So that's a good thing. <laughs> yes, yes. But with that, we're going to wrap up this episode of Steelers Draft Special on the Global Perspective. I'm Matty P with Shannon White as always. Go Steelers.